Hi, it's Alan Moore from the Aerial Owners Club. This video details how I determined the correct rear wheel offset for the 1942 WNG that I'm rebuilding at the moment. But the process should work with any frame, uh, whether it's rigid or plunger. Hope you enjoy it. Any comments, please put them below. And if anything else needs adding to it or explaining, I'll do that. So, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. So the first thing I did was to set up the workbench so that it was level in both directions, longitudinally and laterally. Once that's been done, I then stretch the cord between two fixed points. That's here, and then the cord runs all the way along. The second fixed point here so that gives you a straight datum to line the frame up to. Next job was to fabricate a platform where the top was level with the bench in both directions. This allows you to lift the frame up off the workbench so you can get the back wheel in. It's then a matter of clamping the frame to the support, making sure that it's level laterally, and then using plumb bobs between the centre line between the engine plates, plumb bob lined up with the Dayton line. So then you can stretch piece of cord along the backbone of the frame down the centre of the backbone through the centre of the seat tube across and down with a plumb bob on the end and then it's just a matter of adjusting the frame this way until the plumb bob at the front and the back line up with the Dayton line You can also by putting in the steering stem and the bottom yoke and threading a piece of cord through so that it sits centrally. I've just made a spacer out of brass and with the groove in the centre for the string to align to. And then you can drop another plumb bob and it should then line up with the date and line to show that the headstock is square. A further check on whether the frame's straight can be done by using one of these digital angle finders. So here you can see that the bottom tubes are level, it's at zero, which means that the engine plates should be at 90 degrees. So that's 90.1 and that one's 90.2. Now these gauges have a 0 0.2 degree tolerance so to all intents and purposes the engine plates are at 90 degrees to the bottom tubes. which should mean that everything is straight. You can also do a check by placing a bar through the bolt mounting holes in the engine brackets and checking that being straight, which again 0 0.1 degrees, so that confirms that they are straight. I did however find that the magneto platform was slightly out of true so she'll have to remove a little bit from this side of the engine plate just to drop this side down to make it level. You can also check the alignment of the gearbox sprocket, with the, obviously with the gearbox correctly mounted, 
to make sure that it is, is vertical here we go 89.9 .9. so how happy that that is vertical another check you can do is to see whether there's any twist in the rear end of the frame uh, and that's just a case of measuring between the bench to the centre line of the spindle on one side and the other side and within a couple of millimetres they're the same so the rear end of the frame is also straight so having checked the frame for twist which is that way on that axis you can also check it in this axis by using a set square down from the rear spindle casting down to the bench and then measure how far out it is from the centre line and then do the same from the other side and in my case both measurements were the same at four and one eighth of an inch so now that I'm happy that the frame is straight in this direction and the back end and the rest of the frame is also level in this direction I'm going to start looking at the alignment and offset of the rear wheel so the first thing to do is build up the rim on the wheel rim and true it so that you start off with an offset between the outside of the brake drum and the outside edge of the rim of two inches to give you a starting point so just to make it clear this is the reference face on the drum that you would measure the initial two inch offset from like that and my offset ended up being two and one sixteenth of an inch with the centre line of the wheel in line with the centre line of the frame it's then a case of mounting the wheel the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you've got the wheel set up square or in line with the longitudinal axis so you don't want it this way or this way it's got to be dead dead straight and the way to do this is to mount it in the frame tighten the wheel spindle up and then using a set square measure the offset of the rim from your center line now you see here that i've used a piece of a3 paper and i just printed on that some lines that are two millimeters apart that just makes it easier to see where the alignment is so using the set square mark a point on the rim that's the point that we're going to use to measure from every time mark a point on the set square that's where we're going to measure to every time line those two up and then mark the offset from the center line then a matter of moving the set square through to the other side and moving the wheel round lining the marks up and then measuring this distance if the two distances are the same then the wheel is level in line with the centre line of the frame if it's not slacken off the wheel spindle and then using the adjusting nuts on each side the adjusting bolts on each side adjust the wheel so that these two measurements are equal you then know that 
the wheel is square. Now we know that the wheel is square in this direction or should be because we've measured the height of the spindle on both sides but you can do another check just by putting the digital gauge on and that's reading 90.1 degrees so that shows that the rear wheel is in fact square to the frame. So now that we've checked that the rear wheel is squared in both axes, axes, we've now got to make sure that the sprocket, the rear wheel sprocket, lines up with the gearbox sprocket. So what we can do is attach a straight edge to the outside face of the gearbox sprocket, clamp it against the face, and then that should line up with the outside face of the rear wheel sprocket. If it doesn't, you'll have to adjust the spacers on the rear wheel to move the rim one way or the other until the sprockets line up. This is most important for chain life because if these two sprockets are out of line, the chain will wear very quickly. So, once you're happy that you've got the rear wheel sprocket lined up with the gearbox sprocket, then you can look at getting the centre line of the wheel dead in line with your datum, which is the centre line of your frame. And to do this, go back to measuring the offset of the wheel rim at the front and at the back remembering to turn the wheel round so you're measuring the same point on the frame both times and do the same thing on the other side making sure you're measuring exactly in line with where you measured on this side of the rim so measure again at the back and at the front and then make a note of these two distances so having done the two measurements if the centre line of the rim is in line with the datum showing the centre line of the frame these two measurements will be the same if the measurements aren't the same then you need to adjust the offset of the wheel rim until they become the same. So if this measurement is wider than this measurement then obviously you need to move the rim half the difference that way. Then it's just a matter of resetting the rim, offset, putting it back in the frame and checking it again until you're happy that the centre line of the rim is in line with the centre line of the frame. And there you go, job done.